Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and here we are right in beautiful downtown Long Beach. Actually, we're standing right in the middle of one of the most historic places in all of Long Beach, maybe in all of Southern California. Our tour guide today is Ken Larkey. Right. And Ken, let's let everybody know, you've written this book on this place right here. Let's let everybody know exactly where we are standing right now, because at first glance, doesn't look like very much right now. It isn't, right here was the heart of the pike. The pike? The pike. Now, for people who were born and raised in Southern California, that name would mean something but explain to everybody else exactly what the pike was. It was an amusement zone. Uh, one of the uh, most, uh, I guess, um, famous one on the coast, even over Venice and Santa Monica and their amusement parks, and all the way up to Santa Cruz, this was it. The only one that had the double uh, roller coaster too, double track roller coaster. Most of them were only single track. All right, now let's start from the beginning because we've got these wonderful old postcards here. The Pike actually started back right at the turn of the century. Yeah, there's some pictures of it in 1898, somewhere in there, and then 1900, and then the bathhouse was built in 19, started in 1902 and was opened in 1904. The bathhouse. Now, bath what was the concept of the bathhouse? I don't know. It's just that uh, that was a great thing in those days to have bathhouses on the on the beaches. Back east, they had them too, and this was uh, a colonnade type of one with uh, pillars and beautiful looking building, and it was outlined with um, light bulbs at night, and so it was a place to come. Kind of like an indoor swimming pool. It was an indoor swimming pool, yes. Now the pike started. You told me right over here. This little entranceway under this building was the way people would walk into the In pike. later years, that was built over the, over the midway. Uh, they bought the property there, but they let them have what is ingress mm -hmm. so people could come into the pike. If they hadn't, there wouldn't have been an entrance to the pike, but that was the main entrance. And when people came to the pike, what was here? Was what all, was all around where we're standing this right was now? all beach. You can see this is sand here. This is all built on sand uh -huh. on the old beach. And the Municipal Auditorium was just beyond that arch there, the old wooden, uh, that was the social center of Long Beach. They had dances there and uh, Chautauqua came there and conventions and whatever. So this was a great place to come from there and, and have fun. All right, now it quickly became in the 30s, in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, this was the place to come. There are these amazing pictures of different rides one of them was called a bamboo. What was that one bamboo all about? Bamboo slide. It was built, uh, made with bamboo. That, you know, bamboo slick. And it was a slide. And they had uh, gunny sacks or little carpets that they sat down on and slid down that. <laughs> so it was just as simple as sliding down a... Yeah, and then as, uh, if you know anything about bamboo, after a while when it gets worn, it kind of splinters. Oh! Uh-huh. So uh, the insurance company wouldn't insure them anymore, so they, that was the end of the bamboo slide. Yeah, but that wasn't the end of Bisbee's Spiral Airship, a 1915 thrill ride. Bisbee came before the uh, bamboo slide, and that was a gondola that you would get in and it would take you up uh, maybe, what, two, three, four? stories high and then you'd come circling down a track all the way. And that was a thrill ride in those days. Wow. And let's walk down, this would have been called what right here? The main, uh, this is called the Midway and also it was the Walk of a Thousand Lights later on. Now wait a minute, what is a, a Walk of a Thousand Lights? Well as you can imagine looking down through here, the building is on each side with just a walkway and uh, for nighttime uh, thrills they put they strung uh, bare light bulbs all across, and there was a thousand of them. And you can see them in some of the pictures. And that lit it all up, and that's what got its name. So they were always thinking of a way to promote yes. coming here. Yeah, they always had something. They even had a bathing beauty contest. The uh, runway was right down through here, and the contest ended up over at the old Virginia Hotel, which was to the west of us here. Now, the 800-pound gorilla at the park was the roller coaster. Right. I've seen pictures of it. It was a monster. 
It was the largest one on the west coast at the time. Really? De double track. And uh, I rode it when I was 10 years old. I went with my brother and a uh, friend. So three of us sat in the seat. And when they went up to the very top and took that first dip, I went down into between the seat and uh, <laughs> all the floor, I should say. And the girl behind, in the next car behind us, she yelled, uh, he fell out, he fell out. <laughs> and every time I tried to get back up, we went down another dip, and I couldn't get out. Well, it must have been quite a ride. You only rode it once, once in your I life. I would never go back. Where was it? Right around here? It went right through here. There was a sign over between the building. There was a building here and a building there, and the sign said Fun Zone, and that's where the uh, roller coaster was. And it was a big old wooden roller coaster, and we have these wonderful clips from this movie starring Eddie Cantor, really? in which was shot here at the Pike at that roller coaster and they did some amazing tricks. I mean just looking at the photography mm. it looks scary. It was scary and a lot of people wouldn't uh, go back on it again but they out in front of it they had a lot of um, benches, wooden benches where people would sit and wait for them to ride it and, and get off. And listen to people scream. Oh and they screamed all right. You <laughs> hear it on the on the uh, on the film but uh, there was an interest where they came out, and they would come running out of there. Wow. Glad to get off of it. Well, the rides were a big part of the pike. There was another part of the pike as well, and that is the part of the pike that was associated with the sailors, with the fleet being here, right? Right, right. This is the midway here, and you follow this through. It was called Seaside Walk. It went all the way over to the Navy landing, which wasn't very far for them to walk. And when they got off the ships, they came in on launches to the Navy landing, got off and came down this seaside walk, which also had Navy uh, locker clubs where they could change their uniform to civilian clothes. But most ah. of them wore their uniforms, pick up girls more that way, you know. And then they walk right down through here and they're right here at the pike and they could spend all day and all night just being here. Of course, there was food here and everything else, so. Probably liquid refreshment at some that, of these adjoining. That, uh, you're right, that came later though. They didn't have any uh, saloons or bars down here until uh, about the war, during yeah. the war. And right here at this location right here is where the, uh, the um, military police or shore patrol had their paddy wagon. Where, right here? Right here. So they'd load up those drunk sailors. Yes. Or rambunctious, rowdy sailors. That's right. Take them off to the... Uh, well, back to the Navy. <laughs> back to the, what they call the brig. <laughs> Yeah, took them to and the then break. they'd be back out the next morning and back out here the next night. Yeah, but maybe they learned a lesson, we hope. And of course, right here was the big ballroom. That's where they could meet the girls, you know. The Majestic Ballroom was right here on this corner. So they had dancing, they had rides, they had Name. food, they had bars, they had hotels. Everything was yeah. right here at the mm -hmm. pond. All right, right, now you rode the roller coaster once, and you've got a great story about it. We have another fellow over here. Come on over here and introduce yourself. We just met this guy today. He showed up. Your name is? Roy Coates. And what's your story here about well, the pike? Well, no, we, we better get well, out of the way. What, That's... Year, what year was he talking about? Well, he was talking about the early years. Well, uh, What do you know about the pike? Well, uh, I overheard him tell about the bridge here. We had a wooden bridge that went across the river, and you could walk from the Navy landing, Pico Street landing, all the ships, which we had 16 battleships, 26 cruisers, some destroyers, and uh, Saratoga and the Lexington laid right at the foot of Pine. All ships in those days never tied up to a pier. They were all brought in by boat. And uh, we had street cars that picked you up there and took you out to your home if you lived here. And then the main line uh, station was up here on Pacific in Pine. You catch the red car there to L.A. But wait but a minute, let's talk about few, the well, Pike, because that's very, what you... Very few people took anything but the Pike. I, in 1933 is when I first came here. and uh, What was it like your well, first time? Well, it was, uh, what impressed me more was the roller coaster and uh, uh, Lee's Barbecue, a very big, huge sandwich place. And then they had a theater and they had a ballroom with about... 30 girls all lined around, uh -oh. and they hired real young-looking girls, and it was a five cents a dance or 10 cents a dance, and a lot of the sailors, the girls they started dancing with, they fell in love with and married. And uh, Now, did you do that? No, I sent and had my high school sweetheart come out. We were married here in Long Beach in 35, so she was with me on the bike from 35 to 37. So and you all would come down here just to kind of hang out? 
No, everything was here. I mean, all your, this was a theme park, just the same as Disneyland, because everything was here. Your, your, all your sideshows, shooting gallery, theater, uh, uh, you walked through a ghost town, uh, they had wrestling matches, uh, everything. You could see anything down here. Well, I've seen... It was, it was the, our theme park. I've seen old pictures. The place was crowded. People shoulder to shoulder through well, here. It was... We had around 30,000 sailors out here, and then three section Liberty, that meant three-fourths of the ship's crew was allowed to come ashore. And uh, so you had a lot of sailors down here. And now when I was... After we had a family started, I brought the daughter down here in a tailor tot. And you got to know the people that operated these card shops. They sell you cards showing you pictures of the pike and of the long beach and uh, of the roller coaster and uh, of your ship. They had, this lady had a picture, eight and a half by 11 glossy print of every ship in the Navy. And uh, this was your first contact to send anything home after you got in. So and, this really was a place for sailors, but it was also a place for families, yeah. for children. It was a whole mix of people and, enjoyed and, this and, place. And tourists, they sold postcards. And uh, I, I think I still have some of the postcards. And uh, they, uh, well, it was just uh, the only place you went. This was it. And Pretty the, exciting stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Roller coaster and the Ferris wheel, and, and then what they call the Hippodrome. And uh, then this is the start of the Rainbow Pier. I don't know if you ever heard of the Rainbow Pier. And they rented boats, a little electric boats. You'd see sailors out there with their girlfriends in the boats. And uh, well, you, almost anything. Well, our crowd keeps growing. This lady just came over and introduced herself. Your name is? is Evelyn Mashburn. And you remember the pot. Oh, I sure do. Well, tell me about it. Well, I was about uh, 10 years old. I used to live right down here on Daisy Street below the Ocean Boulevard, and I, I spent most of my time on the pike. Doing the, what? The sailors would ride, ride the rides, and all the change would fall out of their pockets. So, <laughs> so, so I get to change. Nice, my got educated by playing pinball machines in, on the pike. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute! You were gambling as yeah, a little girl. I, I'm still a gambler. Well, now here's the building that's kind of been in the background during some of our interviews today, and it's no coincidence that we're standing in front of this building because this is the last remaining building from the old pike, right, Ken? That's right. It was built here in 1911, and it's the last one left. All right, now here to tell us about that, your name, sir? Mike Sincola. Okay, and how are you connected with Loof's Amusements? That's what the sign says. Yeah, Arthur Loof was my father-in-law. And, and tell us about him well, and what this was all well, about. And his father was Charles I.D. Loof, who built the first carousel in the United States in 1876. Now where was that? In, on Coney Island. Okay, now how did the Loof family get from Coney Island to the Pike? Well, they had sold carousels around the country and they came to Long Beach in 19, uh, about 1909. They wanted to build a pier, but they couldn't get the accretion and abutting rights from the city. So then they went to Seattle and built the first World's Fair up there and some amusement parks. And they liked Long Beach. They came back here in 1910 to live. They built a factory here and they built this building and, and put a carousel in it started operating the carousel. So the carousel in this building was one of the first rides at the Pike. 1911 I guess it was. More, uh, mechanic, I mean, that was the early day. Mechanical ride, yeah. And I how would say popular that. was that carousel? Yeah, they made a nice living you know, on the carousel. A lot of people liked the ride. It had 52 horses and uh, it was a nice business. Okay, now the carousel stayed here in this building from? 1910 to 1933. And then what happened? They moved the carousel to another building right out here, Hippodrome, and they built that. And then they opened another a game in, the, in this carousel building. It's called Tango. It was a bingo game. Ah. And when bingo was legal for private enterprise. And then it became illegal for private enterprise, and they closed down the bingo. and. Uh, they uh, uh, opened Light Align in 1941. Light Align. So since 1941, the game Light Align has been played inside this building Continu continuously. Continuously since 1941. Every day from 11.30 a.m. to 2 a.m. 
since 1941, seven days a week, 365 <laughs> days a year. Only that? closed twice, half a day when Arthur Luth passed away in 1970, and we closed half a day when Al Brown closed in 1980, when he, he passed away in 1997. Now, who was that? Al Brown was the general manager, partner, for a lot of years who worked here. So that's it? That's it. For over 60 years? 60 years. Wow, let's go inside and look at exactly what Light Align is all about. Okay, we are inside Light Align, and the sign right here gets us excited right off the bat. Light Align, world's most thrilling and fascinating individual skill game. That's the truest sign you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Light Align. It's a unique in the world game. You can only play it here, 300 walk of a thousand lights. There's 64 tables. They're all hooked together, and people start shooting at the same time. They shoot the ball into the grid. As soon as they light up a line, the game shuts off, and the person that lit up the line first wins. So it's kind of like bingo in a way. Skill bingo. That's what it is. So there goes the ball. All right. Now you have to get in. Well, you, you didn't get anything there. That didn't there. go anything. But anywhere. it was a nice try. Now this. <laughs> here, so here's your there second goes the shot. Ball, oh, here it goes. Around. Right. Now you had a goes green four. four. Okay. And now there goes the four lit okay. up over there. Right. Now you got to got to shoot again. Now watch watch your shot. There you go. Up. Oh, here it comes again. You, you're good at this. You, you can oh, make yeah. a good light line customer. Here we are. And there goes the, the two, two lit up. Right. Right. So try it basically, again. it's like bingo. Yes. And the first person who wins gets a line lit. Is the winner. Is the winner. The game shuts off. Now someone else could win at the same time if they have a ball rolling in play, and they can win. So we have more than one winner at one time. They share the prize. And this is the only place in the world yes. where you can play light align. This is it, right here. It's and has this lady been sitting here since 1941 playing light align? No. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mary Sisk has been working for us since 1954. Oh, well, you were almost yes. here from the beginning. <laughs> Come over here and tell us. Quit playing light line just long enough to talk with us. <laughs> You've worked here since? 1954. So you have seen a lot of light aligners come through here? Yes, thousands. And what is the appeal of light align? What is the appeal? The chance to win. Mm -hmm. Money. Yeah. Big money? Yes, I, I would say it's pretty good size money, 15, 25, 100, 200, wow. 210. Wow. You've seen this place packed. Yes. And what kind of people would come in here? Um, all kinds. Yeah. You name it. They're, they're, they all come here and they all enjoy it. Sailors? Well, we don't get the sailors that we used no, to. No, no, I mean in the days when you were here in the town. Oh, yes. Yes, we had many sailors, Marines. Families? Yes. Were kids allowed in? Well, they were not allowed to play. They were allowed in the building, and mm -hmm. they had to leave by 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And is it a pretty simple game to play? Yes, I say it Here, is. pull a ball out there for me. Let's see how you do this thing. So I don't get it over. Wait a minute, you've already got all these things lit up. Well, so you've been playing for a while. Yeah, yes. <laughs> here, let's do it again. Get it all the way around. You might win while we're here. But I don't think there's much of a jackpot today. There's nobody no, else playing. No. That's true. That's true. You need more than one person. <laughs> well, what do you think about the old place? Oh, I Has like it, it been a good... Uh, I, I like it, yes. I wouldn't stay here. Yeah. And do you find it kind of interesting that this is the only place in the world where you can play light align? Uh, yes. We're one of a kind. Now, uh, this is exactly where the old carousel would have been. Right. From 1910 to 1933, it spun in here. Right in here. Right in here, yeah. They took it out, took it, out. Took it across the street. Yes. Then wasn't there a picture of it burning up? Yes, upstairs we have a picture of it. Burned July 17th. 1943. But they replaced they it. They replaced it outside uh, and it operated until the pike closed. And this is the original building that's been here since? 1910. Wow. Exactly the way it was. This is amazing. Look at these wonderful old light fixtures and over here the old mirrored sign 
that says loops, that's been here forever. Yes, that's here from the bingo days. When they called the numbers, that was the number board. There's wow. 75 numbers on there. Now we use it for the winner. This table. is a wonderful bit of history right here. It's a nice place. And you told me in the early days the, the family used to live up over here? Yes, they lived upstairs and uh, right over the carousel. They always did that. Uh, I guess it was a nice place to live and it was right by the business. Didn't that get noisy? Well, it was probably, you know, the calliope was nice music. And it was a cash business, you know, so I think that was part of it. Oh, they liked hearing the sound of the cash well, going around. And if it stopped, then she would call down here with want to know what's wrong. Mrs. Loof would? <laughs> Miss Loof, yeah. <laughs> here they are, waiting to start playing light a line, right? Right, that's right, light a line. For how many years have you all been over here? About 40 years. Really? 40 years at light a line. Get up every morning looking forward to coming down here. You're a kid. Yes, it's just like coming to a family reunion. Now, what it is, is it about light a line that. It's just a relaxing place. It's just, it's, it's great. It's beautiful. I just wouldn't take nothing for it. Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't. Kind of got a nice atmosphere oh, yes. in here. Everybody in here, just like family members. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's wonderful. And the manager, oh, he's awesome. And the oh, game it's... itself, how hard is the game? It's easy if you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what you're doing? Oh, yes. Of course we do. So I mean, who, who makes the money on this, you or your husband? We win a little and lose a little, so... That's the game. But really, you know? it's not the money, is it? No, it's it's the fun. It's fun, really. And, and just as I say, it's relaxing. It's relaxing. It's it's really nice. Do you remember the old pike? Sure you do. Sure I do. Oh yes, the whole thing. We used to come down here, the whole thing. All those sailors be down here just having fun, <laughs> blasting away, boy. It was great, great. <laughs> On the Fourth of July, you know, the giant roller coaster used to be right back here, and the lineup used to be all the way up that hill to get on that ride. It's all gone. It's so sad. It was gold mine in the sky, and the city didn't keep it. And the city didn't keep it. There's the bulldozer. There's City Hall right there. There are the city officials up there watching us down here, Ken, don't yeah, you think? They're up there on the 14th floor in their ivory tower, <laughs> breathing rarefied air. <laughs> What's going to happen? To loops. Well, July 5th, uh, 2001, 8 o'clock in the morning, they're going to come take the building. They're going to take the roof off and they're going to move it just behind us here. And they're going to put a visitor information center that'll duplicate the building. Uh -huh. And then where we're standing will be two stories of parking. It'll be a $250 million condominium, apartment, hotel, commercial complex. They're going to have two nine story apartment houses right here on these corners and uh, everything that was here will be will be gone including light a line which has been operating continuously in this building yes. seven days a week 365 days a year since 1941. yes it is and we hope to continue at 2500 long beach boulevard uh, i don't know if we'll be open on july the 5th 2001 but we're moving the business so you're going to move the machines and the old mirror and yes. the old signs in there and start up at another location yes as many artifacts as we can we're going to have a little historical museum in there things from the pike things from uh from loofs and we'll have that at the new location so, so this old building is going down this is literally the last physical link to the pike. Yes, it is. It's the last one. The, uh, the first one to go was the plunge, and that's the building behind us, the Verizon building. Now, Loofs is the last one. We've been here uh, since 1910. This is the last of the amusement zone. Wow. How do you feel about that, Ken? Well, not only me, but everybody misses the pike, because I published that pike book, and it sold like wildfire. And uh, everybody remembers the pike, and they have a lot of fond memories. Well, it's gone now. Progress is marching ever forward here in Long Beach. But there are a lot of people out there who will have memories of being at the Pike. They might even remember you in there taking the money down there at Light, 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 Light Line. Yes, you're so right. <laughs> We've heard some wonderful stories just by accident today. The two older gentlemen we met who told us stories about being here in the old days. There'll be a lot of people who will be hearing about this, learning about it for the first time. But it is very, very much not only a part of Long Beach history, 
but of California history, of amusement park history, of ocean front history uh, in this country. It's gone today, but its memories are still very, very much alive. The Pike, which was here from 1898 until about the 70s, I guess it was. Yeah. And loops, which came here in 1910, and uh, it's continued. And they had the factory here, and Arthur Luth built the Santa Monica Pier too, which still exists. Wow. And that carousel building was his, and they owned that pier, and that's still going. So the Loof, some of his things are still there. And the Santa Cruz Amusement Park was built by Loof, and that still operates. So there are some some things left. This one will be the last thing in Long Beach, which wow. is sad. Pretty sad. Yeah. Well, it's been a good day, a sad day, but a very full day of history as we have all learned together about this grand and glorious place which is leaving us forever called the Pike.